Hello friends, Tanya here, and today I am going to play with the November 2023 card kit of the month from Spellbinders. I'm also going to play with some of the other card kits, or excuse me, kits of the month. We've got the embossing folder of the month here, Meandering Florals, and um, All You Need Sentiments Glimmer of the Month. This is a paper from the card kit of the month. And I know I haven't made a card kit of the month video in a while, but this one really sparked my fancy. I love blue and that probably had something to do with it. I've got a panel of white cardstock here that I cut down to six and three quarter by five, four and three quarters and embossed with that embossing folder. Now I'm using this Moonlight Pearl luna paste from cosmic shimmer i happen to get my this one at trinity stamps but i believe you can get it on scrapbook.com also um i'm using this because i left my um cosmic shimmer snow and ice luster polish and my pearl luster polish and my simon hurley lunar paste in slippery when wet at my stepdad's i'm at home as you can see maybe with my video background here and the fact that it's not wiggling all over the place because I'm not on a card table in front of a patio door. I'm in my stamping studio with my usual equipment. Well, I had to make do with what I had in the house. I don't typically have more than one way to get the same effect, but I found that using this Luna paste, it's not Lunar paste, it's Luna paste, works very similar to the snow and ice um, luster paste, Lust, mm, whatever you call it. Now I've glued this all down to a uh, five by seven card base and I am layering some extra cardstock be behind each of these layers for extra stability and a little extra dimension. And this center strip is about two and one eighth inch by six inches because the pattern paper is six inches. I cut that down from a six by six piece of pattern paper that came in the kit. These are some elements or ephem ephemera from the kit. We've got three butterflies and this pretty little flower, white flower with gold foiling. And I'm just adhering the butterflies. I put glue directly on the bodies of the butterflies and I have some extra pieces of cardstock behind the wings to get add a little dimension to those. Now this sentiment is from the glimmer of the month which is amazing. It has 14 different sentiments and there's two plates and one die and it cuts all of them out um, well seven at a time <laughs> in one fell swoop. Now the sequins that came in the kit this month are this deep um, deep brown or brassy color and they go very well with the kit. The inside of the card we're going to use the Sending Sentiments Clear Stamp and Die of the Month. Lots of great sentiments in here. There are coordinating dies for all of the large cursive sentiments and one long die for all of the um, printed sentiments that will work and you can you do some partial die cutting with that. Now I did heat emboss this with some brass, Hero Arts brass embossing powder using some embossing ink to to do this and I am embossing it right on that pattern paper scrap from the front of the card and now I am taking a piece of white scrap cardstock and embossing the smaller sentiment or the sub sentiment in the brass embossing powder also. I'll just heat that until it is raised and shiny and we have a beautiful sentiment to add to the inside. I am really loving the sentiments that are included in the kits of the month this month. We've got the glimmer foil and the stamp and die set this month that are all kinds of sentiments. I've taken another of the butterflies, all of the ephemera, there are two of each in the kit. That is the usual configuration. I've glued the butterfly to the inside of the card using my Barely Art Precision Glue. And now I'm adhering the two portions of the sentiment to the card. 
The reverse tweezers are pretty handy for me. My big clumsy hands can sometimes um, make it difficult for me to get placement just right. And they're like a third set of hands for me. That's card number one. Card number two, we are going to use some of the cardstock that's included in the kit. It's all cut to A2 size. We're going to use the Glimmer Monoline Stars and the Essential Diamonds. We're going to Glimmer Foil this whole red piece of cardstock using some red foil. So I'm going to get that all heated up and run that through the die cut or the platinum machine to get that nicely foiled. As you can see, the plate is just a little bigger than the um, paper. Next, I'm taking the precision layering dies. These are the A2 dies. And I cut down a piece of that Fox printed paper. Here is our uh, foiled cardstock. And now I'm choosing the size of the essential diamonds that I want to die cut that from. You're not going to see a lot of the foiling, just enough to really pique your interest. Now we're going to adhere this printed piece of pattern paper. Um, it's a bunch of running foxes, which is such a perfect coordination for this. We'll center that diamond right in the middle. I've adhered this to one of the included A2 size card bases from the kit. There are eight card bases and eight coordinating envelopes in this kit. And I have this cluster of ephemera from the kit also. This is a cute little fox. I've placed a rainbow behind his head and we have uh, two swoops of leaves that are placed behind his shoulders. Kind of looks like wings. Not really what I was going for, but I like the way it frames up our fox and creates a landing space for the rainbow. I'm adding some leaves and a flower around the bottom of our fox and then another sentiment from the um, foil set, glimmer foil of the month. We're going to use the sentiments from the clear stamp and die of the month again. I did heat emboss and die cut the sending using brass embossing powder and I did stamp it on the scrap of cardstock from the front of the card. I like to use up as much of the pattern paper as I can and it's nice to have that extra bit of coordination here. We're going to add the sub-sentiment, the warmest thanks, under that sending. And that is finishes the inside. Now we're going to add some more sequins to the front. And um, sometimes you just go with your old favorite method. And that for me is diagonal across the card. Three groups of three sequins. Now on to card number three. We are going to start with the crisscross motif 3D embossing folder of the month. This is really a deep embossing. It's very gorgeous. We're also going to use the Moonlight Pearl Luna paste again. And this time I thought I would try applying it with a sponge dauber. This is one that I have used for other clear like clear or sparkly um, other mixed media products and I'm just using that to apply all over this card base. I thought this would be faster or not card base but this panel. This is um, six and a half by four and a half inches. It's going to be another five by seven card. I don't think it's any faster using the sponge, the mini uh, distress blender than it is to use my finger and it didn't really absorb into that sponge. Um, it just, it was actually a little harder to pick up some of that paste with the sponge than it was with my finger. Now I'm adding all of these pieces of ephemera, which I've already added little pieces of cardstock behind to create this beautiful all over floral background. The ephemera makes it really easy because you don't have to create these floral bunches from stamps or dies before you can adhere them directly to the card front. There's lots of foiling and lots of different styles of, of florals and greenery in these little bunches, and there's lots of them to choose from. I, I only used 
I think I used two thirds of the different um, floral ephemera bunches, and I so I there are gobs of those left, and I'll be using them on different projects. Now that I have them all adhered to the card front, I'm going to trim off the excess and use some of those pieces that I trimmed off to fill in a little more on some empty spaces on this card front. Now that I have all of those pieces adhered, I have already put a piece, couple pieces of scrap cardstock on the back of this, and I will adhere that to the five by seven card base. And then we're going to use um, this popular sentiments die set. It does the word and the shadow, and I chose happy birthday. I used some uh, pearlized paper, some brushed navy. Um, Spellbinders does not carry this. I just happen to have this in my stash. I did use some brushed white cardstock as the shadow. I'm just going to adhere those. Again, my tweezer is my godsend here because it really helps me hold on to these little tiny pieces and get them placed exactly where I want. And it goes very smoothly and very quickly. I leave these portions in because I figure if you're new to stamping or die cutting, this would be a useful thing for you to watch to get some tips on how to adhere these delicate die cuts together in the easiest and more most precise way. The precision layer, or excuse me, precision glue, the Barely Arts precision glue is my favorite. It's got a very fine tip for easy application and you only need a little tiny bit to get a very good um, hold. My stuff does not let go I, there are things I made two years ago that are in my stash that are just as well adhered now as they were the day I made them. Now we're just going to place our sentiments on the front of the card. I'm trying to get a nice placement. Um, now that I'm looking at it, it might not be exactly straight, but pretty darn close. Uh, I don't want to cover up too much of the beautiful florals. Next we're going to use the inside card sent, uh, glimmer sentiments. This was from one of Yana Makula's releases and I foiled this in some cobalt foil and I'm using one of the precision layering mini slimline dies here to die cut out our sentiment. I did some partial die cutting with that so I could get exactly the length I wanted. I took a couple more pieces of ephemera from the kit and we'll adhere those to the uh, inside to add a little extra uh, of the in outside of the card to the inside. This says, wishing you a birthday filled with friends, love, and laughter, not just for today, but for all the days after. On to card number four. This is going to be another fox card. And this one uses entirely things from the card kit of the month. I took this beautiful plaid cardstock, or excuse me, pattern paper, and cut that down to four by five and a quarter inches, added some extra cardstock on the back for a little extra stability and dimension, adhered that to our eight two size card front, and then I have all of these pieces of ephemera that I've already added varying uh, layers of cardstock scraps behind them. We've got this beautiful little jumping fox and this fun little sprig of greenery that I'm tucking in. I want it to overlap this sepia print of the forest, of a path in the forest, which is, it just is very nostalgic, very relaxing. Um, this just looks very calm and, and meditative to me. I took one of the puffy stickers from the kit, which is this cute little fox, put that on the swag of greenery. I love that ruler. I think that just um, plays into the whole theme of the card. There is another fox ephemera that I'm going to add to the inside. And I took one of the chipboard stickers with a sentiment on it that reads, find quiet moments and embrace their extraordinary wonder and place that on the front of the card under the ruler. I'm adding some more sequins in my usual fashion with uh, a trail of three gro groupings of threes. 
On to card number five. We're using this beautiful crisscross motif 3D embossing folder again. And I took a piece of uh, navy blue cardstock from the card kit, trimmed that to four by five and a quarter, embossed it, and now I took out this blue parakeet uh, gilding polish. So this particular gilding polish, on white paper it looks green, on black paper it looks blue. And we've got kind of a blue and green uh, effect going on here on the navy blue. And I think that really turned out well. I did test it on the back of the cardstock before I put it on the front, just in case I didn't like it. But I did. <laughs> we've got the uh, ephemera from the kit. This is a big blue doily. I've added extra pieces of cardstock behind all of these pieces of ephemera because that just makes them um, it just makes them look better, adding a little bulk to them. That swag of greenery comes into play again. We've got this cute little blue teapot filled with florals and another one of the all you need sentiments, which is the glimmer of the month. I uh, I die cut. Sorry, I glimmered and die cut one set of these elements and I don't think I ran out of sentiments before I ran out of cards. Next we're going to use some Versifying Claire Nocturne ink and the clear stamp of the month and I am stamping you are in my thoughts have a sweet day on the inside of this card. On to card number six we're going to pull in the better press of the month sentimental mosaic I've got a piece of watercolor cardstock here and I've adhered that with some best ever craft tape. We're going to ink up our plate with Lost Shadow uh, Distress Oxide ink. I only have five colors of the Better Press ink and Light Light Gray is not one of them. I did run this through twice or I'm going to run this through twice because I did not ink it completely as you can see on the first run and um, I am content with this, but as you can see, it did shift a little bit when I was inking. I was being a little too aggressive there, and that bottom gray plate, the magnetic piece, shifted a little bit, so it's not crystal clear. I could have redone it, but it's a very background element, so I decided to go with it. Next, I have the Versifying Claire Pinecone ink, and one of the sentiments from the Better Press of the Month on some watercolor paper. We're going to use the postage edge rectangles to die cut a piece of the larger mosaic and then the precision layering A2 dies to die cut our sentiment. I have a piece of the pattern paper from the kit which is cut to five and a half by four and a quarter. It's going to cover the entire card front. I'm going to adhere that and then I have added extra pieces of cardstock behind all of the different layers that are going to be added to the front of this card, as usual. So this postage edge rectangle with the mosaic better press, the sentimental mosaic better press image is added to the card first. And then I have these cute hiking boots or work boots with florals in them a camera, and two groupings of feathers that we're going to tuck in our little um, vignette here. I had to change my plan of where the feathers were going to go just so that they would fit on the card front. We'll take our main sentiment that says hello there and adhere that tucked in. And we're going to add some um, embossed sentiment here. We're going to use you are in my thoughts, again using the brass embossing powder on a piece of white cardstock. I did stamp this twice. I wanted to make sure that we had plenty of ink on there and I don't push hard because I don't want to squish that fine detail lettering. I just tap just gently um, push down on that. This is again that brass embossing powder. I have a little bit where I didn't want it and I use the pointy end of my pickup stick to remove any extra embossing powder. I did use um, my anti-static powder bag before I did the uh, stamping but sometimes there's still just a little too much static 
or uh, something that caught. I've die cut that with a coordinating die. We've got another floral ephemera piece from the card kit. I adhere that to the center of the inside of the card and I'll layer our embossed sentiment right over the top of that ephemera. I think that turned out just beautiful. I did get a little schmutz on the corner there where it, with my gluey fingers. Next, I'm going to add, guess what? More se uh, sequins in the same pattern, two groupings of three, one in each um, diagonal corner. And that finishes this card. Card number seven, we're gonna start with the meandering floral and the essential arches. So I took this piece of white cardstock, die cut it with an arch, and then embossed it with the meandering floral. And then we're gonna take that moonlight pear, a pearl, not pear, <laughs> pearl, and we're going to use um, that to add some highlight to the edges. I just wanted a little extra oomph on this background element. You're not gonna see most of this, but I really like how this amps up the design. I'm cleaning the uh, Luna paste off of my finger with a microfiber cloth. We're going to use the sentiment from the Build a Card. Um, it's the small die of the month. I took this one sentiment, die cut it with some, um, Oh, what is this called? Mirror cardstock, gold mirror cardstock. And I have an extra piece of cardstock here that I die cut to add a little extra height and adhered those together. I've added extra cardstock behind all of these elements and we'll start adhering them to an A2 size card front again. I do make 14 cards in this video and I used all eight of the um, card bases that came in the kit. You know that's unusual for me. I prefer to make five by seven cards, but don't worry, there's plenty of those in this video too. <laughs> so I'm centering the group of elements on the card front. We've got this cute little birdhouse and I'm going to tuck that behind our floral swag here. Looks like a very sweet hidden little birdhouse in the flowery bushes. We'll adhere the sentiment right behind below that floral swag. Just making sure I don't have any glue on the metallic portions where I don't want it. And then I found this beautiful foiled um, little arrow in the uh, ephemera pack and this cute little bird who's about to land on his home. Just making sure I don't have any of that glue stuck. And of course the sequins are just waiting to be placed. So I'm adding a scattering of the uh, placements for the, the sequins. Usually I pick out my placement with the sequins first and then come back with the glue. But this time I decided to be a little more daring and a little less careful with where I'm placing them and just stick with my usual pattern. We're going to take another of the groupings of flower ephemera Add that to the inside of the card and another of the all you need sentiments from the Glimmer of the Month kit. I use these on almost every single card in this video. Next, we're going to use the Seasons Greetings Evergreens Better Press plate set. I have a piece of cardstock here and I have Lost Shadow again and Weathered Wood um, Distress Oxide. I have to be a little careful with my weathered wood because that ink pad wants to actually separate from the base of the ink pad. The felt part does. I used a, a mini distress um, ink blender to blend those inks on the plate a little bit. There's a pretty stark difference there, but that's okay. I have two distress mica stains that I'm deciding which one I wanna use. There's frozen fog and phantom mist, and I decide to go with the lighter of the two. This is the frozen fog. These are both from this year's release of distress mica stains. You can currently get all 36 of the distress mica stains that have been released so far. And I've linked the just the frozen frog fog in the um, description. Sorry, in my l product list. Now my product list is usually so long with these long videos that I have a list 
link to, sorry, I have a link to the visual list if you want the full list. Otherwise, the links in the description box will only go to, um, in this one, like the, the club kits and maybe uh, any other brand new products that I'm using. So I've taken this cute little teepee and this sign post and this adorable little hedgehog and adhered those onto our cute little evergreen forest. I've taken a sentiment from the chipboard stickers and I do put extra adhesive behind any of the stickers that I use because I just don't trust stickers. I feel like the adhesive help sticks for a little bit and then it wants to pop off. There's these cute little enamel dots and hearts in the kit this month. And I took one of the hearts and centered that over our sentiment and added a couple more sequins on that. And then we're going to take the happy birthday glimmer sentiment from this month's glimmer of the month kit. The front of the card, the signposts say, follow your heart. And the sticker says each day brings a new adventure. So I thought that was appropriate for a birthday card. All right, on to the next card. We are going to go all out with the postage edge theme here or post stamp, postage stamp? Yes, postage stamp theme here. Um, I had die cut and embossed with the meandering floral. I used one of the postage edge rectangles to create this center portion. The pattern paper is from the kit and it is cut down to four by five and a quarter inches. There are extra pieces of cardstock behind all of the ephemera and the layers. And we're going to create this cute little uh, grouping here, um, trying to space the three postage stamps as well as I can. And then we have this box full of florals that we're going to tuck on the last corner of this grouping. I like how that adds just a, a cute little punch of irregularity. It breaks up the pattern a little bit. We're going to use another sentiment from the Glimmer of the Month kit. This one says, thanks so much. And then we're going to add, of course, two groupings of three sequins on this card. I centered those around our floral box because I thought that would be the best way to add them. Then on the inside of the card, we're going to use the Sending Sentiments Clear Stamps. We're not going to use the dies this time. I'm using Versifying Claire Nocturne ink and my Misty. And I wanted a really good solid inking of this, so I'm going to stamp it twice. But there's a problem. It uh, did not go back in the same spot. Spot. So I must have not had it all the way in the corner when I stamped it the first time. And yeah, I decided that that was too blurry. So I took a piece of four by five and a quarter inch cardstock, recentered those uh, stamps in my Misty, stamped those, glued that cute little butterfly on the inside. It kind of matches the butterfly on the stamp on the front of the card. And that is that card number nine. Card number 10, we're going to use the crisscross motif and the postage edge ovals this time. I've die cut the oval and then embossed it with that deep embossing. And we're going to use that midnight pearl Luna paste again, because I wanted a little shimmer on here. Um, so I did that really quickly with my finger. Really easy to do. This paste is actually probably supposed to be used through stencils and such, but I love finding other ways to use it. We're also going to use this beautiful wood grain background glimmer foil plate and some polished, no, this is, this is either matte gold or satin gold foil. And we're using an entire half sheet of cardstock. So I did one foiling and then I'm going to line this up with the edge of the foiling, take this very hot plate, ouch, 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 <laughs> be careful, very hot. Line that up with the edge of the previously foiled area, tack it down with a couple pieces of best ever craft tape and put that back down on our platform and use the shims to line up just with the edge of the plate so it doesn't go over the part that's already been foiled. And there we go. 
Yes, there's some gap in there, but don't worry, it's going to be covered by the other elements on the card. I've trimmed that down to six and three quarters by four and three quarters. Yes, because this is going to be another five by seven card. I've added some extra cardstock behind this layer. I'm adhering it to a five by seven card front. I have this wood grain piece of cardstock. Uh, this is pattern paper from the kit. This is four by six inches. Extra piece of cardstock behind that. And we're adhering that down nicely centered on our wood grain glimmer foiled panel. We are going to put this oval slightly above center. And we've got this pretty uh, wood slice with a heart. A uh, lovely, it looks like a wedding cake to me. And another swag of that greenery. I've added extra cardstock behind all of these elements again. And I am creating this cute little bunch over the oval, which we're covering most of the oval, but I wanted a little extra definition around our grouping, which is why I had that white background. We're going to take a couple of the sentiments from the glimmer of the month. We've got always and forever and congratulations. Adhering those down quickly. And then more sequins. I'm not doing my two little groupings of three this time. I've put lots of sequins on this time. It's a bigger card and I wanted to fill a little more of that space. Um, I have a hard time with a lot of white space. I always want to fill it. <laughs> so I'm trying to add extra elements that make your eye travel across the card without being too cluttery. We're going to use some more of those enamel hearts from the kit. I chose three of the hearts, or excuse me, the pink hearts. There's two different colors of pink here. We've got a slightly darker and a slightly lighter. I put the slightly darker one near the sentiments and the lighter ones in the scatter of sequin trails on each side. We're going to take another ephemera floral bunch and another sentiment from the glimmer of the month and adhere those to the inside of the card. I have really, <laughs> really enjoyed doing these um, floral bunch and sentiment elements on the insides of these cards. I made it through almost all of the ephemera in this bunch this time. All right, we're going to use the, on card 11, we're going to use the Better Press Seasons Greetings Evergreens again. And I pulled out the Tawny, is that Tawny Brown? Yeah, Tawny Brown Distress Ink. No. Better press ink. There we go. And I have a scrap of watercolor cardstock here again. And I'm using the archival ink um, cleaner, stamp cleaner. Now, this tends to set off my asthma, which is probably why I don't use the better press ink as much as I use other stuff because the cleanup makes me cough. <laughs> Next, we're using the precision layering A2 side. Uh, Oh, this is the B set. And I've die cut two elements here. I die cut the evergreen better pressed piece with the smaller square uh, rectangle. And I die cut the pattern paper with the, um, this would be three and three quarters by five inches. And we're layering on this cute little postage stamp squirrel, another of the wood slices and this grouping of houses that you're gonna see in a minute. Now they could be houses, they could be sheds, they could be burnt houses. I think they just really fit in with that rustic feeling. I love how those evergreen trees are just peeking over the top of our ephemera. And we'll have those little houses ground our squirrel and wood slice. We're going to take another sentiment from the All You Need Sentiments Glimmer of the Month. This is a negative foiled and then die cut element here. This is, I believe this is the satin rose gold. Um, and I like how that color ties into the rest of the card. Next, we're going to take some of the puffy stickers again. We've got a, a tree with green leaves and there's a tree with um, fall leaves. And we're going to anchor our sentiment with each of those. There's a pretty butterfly the tan or white butterfly. We're going to add that to our wood slice. And on the inside of the card, we're going to add thanks a million. 
if I had had some acorn elements, I would have used those on the inside. I think that would have been really cute. We just need to add some sequins to this fella. Again, two groupings of three. You, I barely uh, made a dent in the sequins that came in this pouch of sequins. I'm sure you could make a cup, well, two or three or four shaker cards with the number of sequins that come in the kit. There is card number, is that card number 11 still? Okay, now we're on to card number 12. I'm going to create some framed elements to go on this card. I've, there is uh, several pieces, there are several pieces of frames on the chipboard package, and there are some cute elements that you can stick in the frames. So I took this taupe and white striped frame put it on a piece, glued it to a piece of white cardstock to create some matting, and then took this delight in the little things square and centered that inside that frame and took a blue puffy sticker butterfly and added that to the corner. We're going to take another layer of um, the frames. We've got this cute blue and gold foiled uh, frame with a scallop edge. I'm going to cut down a piece of cardstock to roughly the size of the frame, but smaller so it doesn't stick out beyond the scalloped edge. And I decide I'm going to take this little bushel of pears from the chipboard stickers and adhere that to the inside of the frame. Last, we're going to take this small blue, white, and green frame and we're going to take another piece of scrap cardstock trim that down so it'll fit behind the frame without hanging out the edges. And then I'm trying to decide what I'm going to put in the inside. I find this cute little yellow circle with a blue butterfly and add that. And now we have a nice grouping of three frames that we can put on our uh, card front. I am just looking through my different elements to see if there's anything else I want to add. And then I take this, um, kind of looks like a ticking type pattern. So it's a, a light blue on a uh, off-white pattern. And I took a scrap of that wood grain pattern paper. And I created this piece that is now 5 by 7 um, And then I trimmed it down to... Uh, this looks like six and a half by four and a half inches. Took a piece of white scrap cardstock and created this thin white piece that's going to be our floorboard to create our scene. This is going to be like in a living room or in a sitting room or a corner of a bedroom. I'm going to adhere this to a card five by seven card base. There is, of course, a piece of scrap cardstock behind these two pieces of pattern paper that are glued together. And now let's get this all organized. I want this um, picture frame grouping to uh, be nicely centered around each other. So we'll start out with the largest and I'm going to make sure that the spacing on the top side and the left side are equal. And then we will do the same for the scalloped frame. We'll make sure that's the same shape, uh, spacing on the right side of that frame and line it up pretty close to level with the bottom of the large square. And then tuck that little uh, small rectangle in the space to even out our little grouping. And then I took our pieces of ephemera to add to our living room setting. We've got this easy chair, a stack of books, and extra cardstock behind them, and a chipboard sticker of a blue mug. Next, for the sentiment, I took this wonderful winter sentiments foil plate. This is from the Simon Hurley release from last month, the um, Snow Globes uh, release, and it foils a bunch of sentiments at once and then die cuts all of them at the same time. I'm either using the pewter or the satin silver uh, foil. I can't remember which. I foiled I think 14 colors of this to have in my stash and then foiled all of the reverse foiled uh, sentiments and I just have them tucked in a zipper bag 
to be used for future um, cards. This way I have lots and lots of these foiled sentiments ready to go whenever I need them. Next, I'm going to use the all you need sentiments. Uh, you can see here the positive and the negative foiling. And I did one of each. We've got holiday greetings and from all of us. We'll adhere those on the inside of the card. I also have this coffee cup ephemera that I'm going to add to the inside of the card. I thought that with that whole cozy um, sitting room feel and that completes this card. Now we have a piece of cardstock that I cut in half to create two different mini slimline cards. These two cards will probably be the simplest and um, quickest cards of the entire grouping here. I have stamped and heat embossed the sentiments from the clear stamp and die of the month here and die cut that. These are on white cardstock. I just add a little glue to the back. I didn't even add any extra layers of cardstock behind these. And I'm going to center this sending sentiment between the edges of this six by three by six piece of pattern paper that has some extra cardstock on the back for a little extra stability on this three and a half by six and a half inch mini slimline card. I'm going to take some of the enamel hearts from the kit. We've got, um, I think I ultimately take three pink hearts and two blue hearts in a variety of sizes and scatter those across the front of the card. They're kind of flowing through the sentiment, making your eye travel through the whole card. I was really drawn to the florals on this pattern paper. I love how they coordinate with the ephemera floral cluster clusters from the kit but I didn't think um, adding the ephemera floral clusters would look right on this. We're going to take another glimmered sentiment from the um, glimmer of the month. This one says thanks so much and this happens to be in that satin rose gold so it doesn't exactly match the foiling on the front but I, I think it's good enough. I don't think people are going to critique that too much. That was card number 13. This is card number 14. Again, taking that panel of three by six inch pattern paper with some extra cardstock behind it, adhered that to the card front. And then we have this cute little typewriter with a group of florals. And honestly, I can't read what it says on that paper without my cheaters and I can't reach my cheaters right now. <laughs> so we added that sentiment underneath the typewriter. We're going to take another ephemera bunch of florals and a sentiment that says from all of us, the front of this card says a gift for you. And then inside it says from all of us. And then we're going to take some of the circle uh, enamel dots from the kit and I have two pinks and two blues uh, small and large of each of those and we'll scatter those across the front of the card just trying to decide what I've got available to pick off of this enamel sheet I didn't use any of the words but there are some really fun ones on here I just had so much fun with uh, the stamp and die the uh, dies and the glimmer of the month sentiments that I just didn't even need these enamel sentiments. I did take this deep teal heart and add that right next to the typewriter. That is all 14 of the cards that I created with the card kit of the month. I did use the other kits of the month except for the stitching, the um, large die, and the wax seal of the month. I didn't get the wax seal of the month so you won't be seeing anything for, on that for me this month. However, I will be coming out with a video with the rest of the kits, also like my usual 10 cards, uh, all the kits videos. If you enjoyed this video, give this a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done that, check that description box below for the links to the visual list and a brief list in the description box. Until next time, here are a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy. Bye-bye.